During the previous five sections, we have learned to build a solid and quite featureful app for listing movies, adding new entries, viewing a page for each movie, and even loading extra details from an external source. The main thing missing is, of course, data persistence. You can add movies, but if you reload the page, they will be gone. But that would mostly require backend work. In this section, our goal will not be on adding new features to the app, but rather to look at good practices and how we can improve our code and its structure so that the app can be easily extended with new features in the future and that it is less likely to contain bugs and easier to test as well. So we will first briefly talk about the issues with the current code, particularly on the controller side. We will then introduce services, which are the way that Angular fixes those issues and how to use them in our pages. And finally, in the last video, we will implement a form of data persistence using local storage as a final touch to Movie Mania. In this first video, we will be reviewing the code that we already have, highlight some of the issues from a structure perspective, and discuss the how and why of the importance of separation of concerns. The first and probably the main issue that an Angular developer would immediately notice in our code is the way data is being loaded in controllers. And more generically, the fact that we do not use any custom services. Let's look at how we are loading data in main.js and in movie.js. We are in one controller making a call to a JSON API, and in the other one, the data is hard coded. Even if we improve this by loading from the API in both cases, as I am doing now, it still means that the various controllers are aware of the method used to load the data. They know where the data is coming from. And also, this really does not follow dry principles. We are repeating the same piece of code in various places. The separation of concern is certainly not respected, as we are mixing presentation logic with what can be considered as the data layer. Let's have a quick discussion as to where the problem lies in the code we have written so far. Keep in mind that it works, it's just not very flexible for future changes or new features. I mentioned separation of concerns, and if you are from a programming background, it's definitely a principle that you are aware of. If your background is more web development oriented, you might not have encountered or focused on that type of structure yet, or seen its advantages. So let's briefly discuss it. When we talk about separating concerns, it's basically that we want to build components in a way that each player focuses on one role in the application or in the page. Most of the time, it means separating presentation from business logic and from the data layer. Why do we want this? Because it makes your code cleaner, easier to extend, easier to debug, to test, and even to adapt to changes. Imagine, for example, that tomorrow we move away from a JSON API and we have a local database handling the list of movies instead. As it stands, that move would require changes on several files, which actually should not be affected by a decision related to backend technologies. That same separation that I mentioned with presentation logic and data is also the one used in the flavor of MVC pattern that Angular uses. We want to have different components for presentation, business logic, and the data layer. Now, if you think back about what we have learned so far, you can say that we already have a component for presentation. That's the template together with Angular expressions. We also have a component for logic, which are the controllers. So what does Angular give us for the data layer? Well, that would be services. Services are singleton objects that can be used in the various parts of your application thanks to dependency injection. Singleton means that they are created once when they are first needed and they remain that same object from then onwards regardless of which part of the application uses them. We don't have custom services yet, so I'm going to add a debug into the Angular $HTTP service. Controllers, on the other hand, 
get created and destroyed each time the application creates or destroys the corresponding DOM element. Let's put some console.debug in our controllers too. Now let's open the browser's dev console and you can see that the controllers get created each time whereas the log for the $HTTP service only appears once even though we are using $HTTP in several places even in several controllers. So $HTTP, the service, only gets created one time. This means that services can easily help you achieve several things. Keep the current state of your application from one part to another and share data between components, views or even across modules. Services are also configurable during the .config phase of the application. Open app.js, we have seen it with the $route service in section 4. We have actually been using services all along such as $HTTP, $route, $route params, etc. All those are Angular built-in services. Services are actually a very large topic, one that will be dealt with in detail in other upcoming courses. But in the next video we will show the basics of services and we will create a service with the help of a service factory.